Hello everyone! It's been a while since my last video. I've been a little bit busy, not only here working in the wood shop, but also with my daytime job. And even more importantly, I also have a family with a wife and three relatively young children of seven, eight years and two years old. So that all takes quite a lot of time. But now I thought it's time for a new video. Last time it was all about technical stuff on the CNC machine where I tried to do my best to explain how to install and operate a rotary axis. This time it's going to be a little bit less technical, back to basic woodworking and it's all related to this machine here that I recently acquired which is an edge bander. Now you can buy off-the-shelf edge banding, but as a woodworker, of course, I would like to be able to cut my own uh, edge banding, which will require me to cut really thin strips. Now, in order to cut thin strips, we will need some kind of jig for the table saw. There are already a lot of videos on YouTube about thin strip cutting jigs, but I will show you my approach. Now, I won't pretend my way is a better way, it's just one way of doing it and I wanted to share that with you. The three requirements for a jig are that firstly it needs to be safe, secondly it needs to be repetitive and lastly, obviously, I want it to be as accurate as possible. So let's head over to the computer and I will show you the design on the computer. See you there. Okay, so here we are behind the computer where I can show you the design of the jig. It's uh, quite simple actually. The base layer is just a piece of plywood. On top of that, I add a second piece of plywood and in that second piece, I routed out two T-slots that will accommodate my Festool clamps. By the way, I will add a link below where you can find the T-slot cutter that I'm using uh, for this particular clamp made by Festool. On top of the second layer I epoxied two 3D printed blocks. The 3D printed blocks have an M10 inside thread. I used my 3D printer but you can also make two little blocks out of hardwood and then drill a hole through the blocks and use an M10 inside thread cutter to obtain the same result. I will provide a link below in the description with the STL file should you want to print these blocks uh, yourself. Then I cut two threaded rods to length and I also printed two turning knobs that I CA glued to the end of the threaded rods. An important design feature of the turning knobs is an index mark because it's going to be important later on that you're able to keep track of how many turns you're actually turning the threaded rods. But that's basically it. Let's go to the shop and make this thing. So I start out by cutting two pieces of plywood to equal dimensions. Then I mark the lines for the slots. Next step is to nail both pieces of plywood together, making sure I avoid the lines where the T-slots have to be cut later on. Then it's time to route out the T-slots. I first use a straight cutter to take away the majority of the material and then lastly I use the T-slot cutter for the actual slot. Then I cut a thin strip that I will glue to the bottom of the jig to align the jig to the side of my sliding table. For people with a cabinet table saw, here you would make a slider for your mitre slot instead. Next, I glue the strip to the bottom of my jig and I nail it in place. Now it's time to epoxy the threaded blocks to the top side of the jig. Then I cut two pieces of threaded rod to the desired length. And lastly, I CA glued the knobs to the threaded rods. So, here we are at the table saw with the completely assembled jig and I will show you how it works. The jig is clamped here already to my table saw slider but the same jig can be used if you use a cabinet style table saw where instead of clamping the jig to a sliding part of your table saw you just glue a strip underneath the jig that fits into your mitre slot and you can slide the jig up and down like that. So here is a piece of scrap wood. It's a relatively short piece. 
That is because the jig is also quite short. You can make a much longer jig if you want, if you need to cut longer strips, of course. I might build a longer one in the future, but this was just for demo purposes, just to show you the principle. So we put the wood on the jig. And the first thing we do is advance both screws far enough so that when you snug up the wood against the screws, the edge just protrudes the edge of your table saw. The reason is that the first cut we're going to do is one to make sure we have a straight starting edge that is lined up with the backside of the blade. So now I have both screws in position. I make sure the block of wood is touching the end of both screws and I will clamp my wood down to the jig. I now unscrew both clamps and I will start advancing the wood to start cutting some strips. Now what you need to know is the thickness of your blade and the pitch of the screws that you are using. In my case, my blade thickness is 3.2 millimeters and the pitch is one and a half millimeter. That means that if I advance my wood by exactly 3.2 millimeters, there will be no strip left that I have cut off. I will have to advance the wood three millimeters and everything more than that will be the thickness of the strip that I am left over with. For demonstration purposes, what I will do is I will advance both screws by four and a half millimeters, which corresponds to exactly three turns of each screw. So three turns on the right, three turns on the left. One, two, three, one, two, three. Make sure the block is again nicely snug against the screws. Clamp it down and let's cut. Now, so far so good. I end up with a nice thin strip, which looks at first sight to be equally thick everywhere. The thickness should be Theoretically, I advanced the screw by three turns, which is three times one and a half millimeters, 4.5 millimeter, minus the blade thickness of 3.2, I should have a thickness of about 1.3 millimeter. Let's check that out. So let's see, hopefully this is visible on the camera. Let's see, yeah, I think it should. And I measure 1.32 three one millimeters. Another measurement 1.32 millimeters. So I think that's fairly accurate. So there you have it. My version of making a thin strip cutting jig. Before I go I want to thank all of you for your nice comments on my first video. This is only the second one. It's a lot shorter than the first one. I will try to do my best in the future to create a little bit more content with shorter compact videos like this one. And maybe one day this thing will turn out into a real channel. I'll do my best. See you next time. Thanks for watching.